This video is on axilla. Uh, in this, we will look at the exact location of the axilla and what is the shape of this. Then the structures which form the boundaries of axilla. And finally, we will look at the contents of the axilla. What is axilla? Axilla by layman, uh, it is called armpit. So armpit and axilla, they are synonymous. And uh, it is pyramidal shaped space. And this pyramid is truncated above. So it will have an apex, which is truncated, which is not very sharp. It will have a base and it will have actually four walls. So the pyramid is four sided. So we can say that axilla is a four sided pyramidal space where exactly it is located. It is located between the upper part of the arm laterally and the upper part of the lateral thoracic wall medially. So this green part which you see here, this is the axilla. Now we'll look at its the four walls. Okay, before that, uh, what does it uh, function as? Main function of the axilla, we can say that it is a passageway through which the upper limb is connected to the root of the neck. So the blood vessels, the lymphatics and uh, the nerves which have to pass either from the root of the neck like the brachial plexus cords or the structures which have to go from the upper limb to the root of the neck like the efferents of the lymphatics and the vein, right? So they are going to pass through this axilla. So we can say it is connecting the upper limb proper with the root of the neck. Let us look at the boundaries of this. So as I said earlier, it is a four sided pyramid. So it has an apex. We can see here, this is the apex. Then it has a base which is directed downwards. This is the base and the four walls are the anterior wall. This will be the anterior wall. This will be the medial wall. This will be the lateral wall. And here we can see that will be the posterior wall. So these are the four walls. The four walls are empty. It is simple to remember. Anterior, actually, you can feel the walls of the axilla. You slightly abduct your arm and then you can feel them, right? So base is directed downwards, right? You can see the skin extending from your uh, thoracic region till the arm. So that will be the base. And just about that, feel the anterior wall. There you can, in fact, feel a muscle also that is pectoralis major muscle. So that will be the anterior wall. Posteriorly towards the sex, scapular region, laterally towards the humerus and medially the thoracic wall. So these are the four walls, apex and base. Let us consider them one by one. Now we will look at the apex. This is the apex. This is directed upwards and medially. And this is formed by a canal which we can see here. This is the canal and this canal is known as cervico axillary canal. As the name suggests, cervical means neck. And obviously, this is the opening between the axilla and the uh, neck, right? That is root of the neck. Now, the structures which bound this cervico axillary canal, they are, we have actually, uh, the boundaries are, anteriorly we have the clavicle, right? So, which part of the clavicle especially? The middle third of the clavicle is going to bound the cervico axillary canal anteriorly. Then we have... Posteriorly, what do we have? We have the superior or the upper border of the scapula. And medially, medially we have the outer border of the first rib. So this canal which we see here, this is the cervico axillary canal. I'll repeat again. The boundaries of cervico axillary canal, anteriorly, middle third of clavicle. Posteriorly, upper border of the scapula. And medially, outer border of the first rib. What are the structures which will pass through the apex or the cervico axillary canal? They will be cords of the brachial plexus from the root of neck to the axilla. Then there will be axillary blood vessels, right? The subclavian artery at the outer border of first rib continues as axillary artery. Similarly, the axillary vein will continue as subclavian vein at the outer border of the first rib. Okay, so these structures will pass plus the long thoracic nerve which arises from the roots of the brachial plexus. Remember the root value is C5, C6, C7 and is going to pass behind the brachial plexus then run on the superficial surface of serratus anterior. So this is a very important nerve. You should remember that and this is also going to pass 
through the cervical axillary canal and then we will have the efferents from the apical group of axillary lymph nodes which are going to form the subclavian lymph trunk so they will also pass through that so these are the structures which will pass through apex cords of brachial plexus axillary blood vessels artery and vein long thoracic nerve and efferents from apical group of lymph nodes which will form the subclavian trunk now base base is directed downwards we can see here and the structures which will be forming here they will be the skin then superficial fascia and we have the axillary fascia they will be forming this now this base uh, is going to extend anteriorly will be an anterior axillary fold and this will be formed by the skin which is present around the lower border of pectoralis major you can feel that with your thumb and the rest of the fingers along the anterior wall of the axilla and the posterior wall and posterior wall be, will be formed by a big muscle which is present on the dorsum of the trunk that is latissimus dorsi so here this base is formed by the skin superficial fascia axillary fascia which extend between the anterior axillary fold and the posterior so here is the anterior axillary fold and here is the posterior axillary fold so this is the base coming to four walls let us look at the walls now if you want to remember what you should do is anatomy can be remembered only by visualization and you don't have to visualize anywhere you have your own body you can feel it also so what you should do is now put your hand on the anterior wall of the axilla right the muscle that will be there which you will be uh, feeling that is the pectoralis major muscle and what lies deep to that so we can see here this is the anterior wall right this will be the not the whole but this will be the anterior wall it is easy to remember pectoralis major which muscle lies deep to pectoralis major the smaller uh, one that is pectoralis minor and the muscle which will be present uh, on the under surface of the clavicle that is subclavius and which fascia encloses these two muscles that is pectoralis minor and the subclavius the, that is clavi pectoral fascia so the anterior wall is simple to remember just put your hand on the anterior aspect of the axilla the first thing you will uh, remember is pectoralis major then remember what are the structures deep to that pectoralis minor then there is subclavius and the clavi pectoral fascia these are the structures when we look at the cross section of the axilla then we can find here let us see here this is the rib right which will be present uh, here on the medial aspect then we have the scapula on the posterior aspect and the humerus which is present on the lateral aspect so here this will be the anterior wall because this is the posterior this is anterior this is lateral and this is medial so anterior wall we can see here the muscle extending from the clavicle till the humerus this is the pectoralis major and deep to that which we can see here is the pectoralis minor in the cross section we cannot see everything because this is taken at this level where the pectoralis minor has come if we are taken it from a slightly higher level then the subclavius muscle will come in picture so this anterior wall is clear last time i am repeating pectoralis major clavi pectoral fascia pectoralis minor and subclavius muscle this is the anterior wall coming to posterior wall now again put your hand if it is possible right if it is possible then the posterior wall or you can remember okay the scapular region right that way you can remember so the posterior wall will be formed we can see here and these structures from above downwards you can see they are subscapularis teres major muscle and the latissimus dorsi muscle so this again is simple to remember posterior wall you remember the scapular region and which muscles would be there subscapularis teres major and latissimus dorsi right so here we can see this is the posterior wall this is the scapula and this is the subscapular fossa the muscle which is taking origin from here is the subscapularis and then we can see two muscles which are attached on the humerus and these are the teres major right and the latissimus dorsi remember the bicipital group floor pe the muscle attached is latissimus dorsi and uh, you can see here to the medial lip of the bicipital group we have the teres major so this is simple to remember posterior wall repeating last time the muscles which will be forming the posterior wall are subscapularis 
teres major and latissimus dorsi. Now let us look at the medial wall. Very simple to remember. Just put your hand on the upper the lateral thoracic wall, right? So the muscle which will be present here will be the serratus anterior, right? Which takes origin from upper eight ribs, right? So actually the medial wall will be formed by upper four or five ribs which are covered by serratus anterior muscle, right? So only upper four or five muscles and obviously there will be intercostal muscles also there. So they will be forming and four digitations of serratus anterior. So medial wall, it is broad. And this is formed by upper four or five ribs and intercostal muscles plus covered by upper four digitations of serratus anterior. We can also see the lateral thoracic nerve which will be a content of axilla running on the serratus anterior. So if we see in this uh, cross-sectional diagram, we can see this is the medial wall, this is the rib and we can see here the serratus anterior taking origin from the outer surface of the rib and getting inserted to the medial border on the costal surface of scapula. So this will be forming the medial wall. We can also see here the long thoracic nerve which is supplying this muscle. So medial wall is clear. Upper lateral thoracic wall. There you have to feel and you'll remember the muscles. Then uh, the lateral wall, right? So lateral wall is actually a very narrow wall because the anterior wall, this is the anterior wall and this is the posterior wall. So you can see here they are converging on the lateral wall. So lateral wall is this narrow. This is formed only by this part, this part only, right? So this is the narrowest of all the wall because anterior wall and posterior wall both converge on this. So let us see what which structure are forming. Here we can see this will be the lateral wall. So it will be formed by upper part of the humerus, right? Upper part of the humerus where we have this bicipital groove. And which tendon is lodged there? The long head of biceps brachii. The tendon of long head of biceps brachii which we can see here right so lateral wall will be formed by upper part of the shaft of the humerus and here we have the intertubercular sulcus or the bicipital groove and the tendon of the long head of biceps brachia is lodged there then we have two more muscles and these are the short head of biceps and the coracobrachialis. So we can see here these muscles in the cross section this is the short head of biceps and this is the coraco brachialis muscle. I hope now the walls are clear. So anterior wall, remember pectoral region, right? Posterior wall, remember scapular region. Medial wall, the upper thoracic wall. And lateral wall, the humerus, the intertubercular sulcus. That we'll remember the biceps and the coracobrachialis. This is how you can remember the four walls of the axilla. Coming to contents, it is simple to remember. See here, axillary artery and its branches. So here are the contents. These are the contents, right? So axillary artery and its branches, axillary vein and its tributaries. Then we will have axillary lymph nodes, which are not shown here, but there are five groups of lymph nodes. I have made a, uh, another video, especially on axillary lymph nodes. I'll put the link of that in the description box of this video. So axillary lymph nodes, then axillary tail of memory gland, a small part of the memory gland that also extends into this. So that will be there. Then cords of brachial plexus and their branches. So we can actually see here the three cords, yellow colored, three cords. I have not shown the branches, right? And the branches of these three cords will be also there. Then we have the long thoracic nerve. Then there is another nerve that is intercostobrachial nerve. So the, it will only appear if this cross section is taken from the second intercostal space because this intercostobrachial nerve is the lateral cutaneous branch of the ventral rami of second thoracic spinal nerve. It is a too long intercostobrachial nerve that is the lateral cutaneous branch of which spinal nerve? the second thoracic spinal nerve, right? So this will be extending from the medial wall, right, to the lateral. That will means it will be going to the upper part of the arm. And it supplies the skin of the upper part of the medial aspect of arm. This is intercostobrachial nerve. 
then we have axillary fat and areolar tissue so this is simple to remember first you start with the name axillary so axillary artery and its branches axillary vein and its tributaries axillary lymph nodes axillary tail of mammary gland axillary fat and areolar tissue now what is left now only nerves are left so which nerves you have cords of brachial plexus and their branches right which other two nerves that you have to remember they are long thoracic long thoracic and intercostobrachial nerve right so these are the contents of axilla so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again